make sure you know. Anyway, the phosphate carries it. So we're going to draw the whole molecule here. And you can figure for yourself. There's a terminal NH2. Draw the double bondo before we go any further. All right, if you're a little intimidated, take a break and color some of these in. There's the terminal end, so we're done with that. Yep, wrong color. I realize my blue is a little purple, isn't it? Well, the next. Hit the song, my blues a little bit purple. Okay, so this is your ammonia with CO2, and it's bound to a phosphate. Now, we used to not like drawing all this stuff in, but we're going to do it. It's bound by an oxygen. What's a phosphate? Remember the five pointed star? There's one point to that oxygen, one point, two points, three points, four more points we got to fill. We'll tell you what, do the double one right off the bat. We know there's going to be two more of these because we know there's four O's. One, two, three, four. Closer here. So again, ask any local blueprint copying place, and they'll give you the old blueprints. Call up an architect. You tell them you're from a school or something or a little science center and you're doing a class project. Get this big paper here. So the phosphorus, it's got its five bonds. Color it in. We got to learn the phosphate group, kids, because everything that comes in the body, glucose, the first thing it does when your insulin tells your, the channel, open up like glucose into the cell, right at the membrane, the first thing that happens, bam, on the number six carbon, it gets phosphorylated. Glute six, I'll call it. Well, phosphates, in this particular instance, how can we write this here? We're going to write it. It's just called a carb. Carb amyl phosphate. Now that that'll sound complicated to somebody that's not used to it, not like us. We're well weathered scientists now, right? Carb, there's a carbon. Amyl, there's a nitrogen. Phosphate, there's the phosphate star. So notice it doesn't mention the oxygen. That's not the important part of this thing. So this is how we're going to excrete the excess ammonia whenever we were breaking up amino acids to do things. Ammonia goes in the bloodstream, I believe, to the liver. So that's probably where it's carbol and carbamylated. But what we need to do is excrete the nitrogen. And notice that it, I mean, this is how brilliant God is. He's like, well, we need to get rid of CO2 too, so let's take the CO2 and the ammonia together. Now when it's phosphorylated, it goes, there's an enzyme. It's going to connect it to l oranthine What that's going to make is a citrulline. Remember we were drawing these before, wondering what they were useful for? Now we're starting to find out, huh? So this is going to be even longer. Let's see if we can fit that into the, the paper here. We're going to have to draw it over here, so let's do this. We took that to that. It's going to come head up over to here. Now, citrulline, let's not get too intimidated. We're going to look at the molecule. I'll show you. This is what I'm looking at, okay? This is the reaction they're showing with the 
end products and all the stuff coming in. So I'm looking at the carbon structure, the backbone. I'm going to count the number of carbons, and we're just going to draw the diamonds in. Try and hold this here. Actually, you know what? We're going to maybe have to draw the nitrogen first. A lot of picking up pencil and putting it down. We could start at the bottom and just go up. There's one, two, three, four. There's still only five carbons. All they're doing is adding this to the end of that. So everything below that is going to be exactly the same. So we could just copy that over here. And what we want to do is leave space for this guy to go on top. I guess I was pointing over there where you couldn't see, huh? Okay, so the carbamyl phosphate is going to add to l orenthine Sounds boring, doesn't it? But believe me, every step in this takes an enzyme that requires different nutrients that you're eating. So your vitamins, a lot of the vitamins that you're eating are used in enzymatic reactions. And each of these will be like phosphorylating something or taking protons or making an OH or adding the carbamyl to orenthine. So let's just draw, we'll just copy this from the bottom up. Let me see if we can leave us some room. Five carbons. One, two, three, four, five. Just number them. One, two, three, four, five. Let's finish these up down here because we know them. We're just copying stuff. So what do we got on carbon? We numbered them different before. So now we see that the second carbon up here anyway gets an N. Do the oxygens first. See, I'm not even sticking to my own rule here. Double bonded O. Single bonded O with a proton in the middle to show us it's an acid. Our carbon's done. These are straight chain carbons coming up, NH2 on that. Two hydrogen, two hydrogen. Okay, we're gonna focus on the top here. Now, what are we doing? We're just copying this, so that gets an N. This is exactly what that was. So instead of having two here, it's gonna be bonded now to the carboxyl group. So we need a black diamond. We're going to put it off on this side because we know there's going to be some oxygens. And then the N is just an N2. So we should do the oxygen first, but I already looked ahead, so I know where I'm going. So look, that carbon's got two ends on it. Double bonded O here. That's a unique carbon. You don't find many carbons like that. Double bonded to an O with two nitrogens on it. Pretty cool. Do our H's first. Don't get too far ahead of ourselves. One, two, one, two. You can always tell the character of the nitrogen by how many H's it has. Done with the O, color it in. Carbon done, four bonds on it. Color these in. Huh? 
We're doing this faster than we usually do because we got a lot to do, and I don't want to.